Hello, my name is Phil, and I like to make things. Lately, I've been making robots, and I use a lot of 3D printed parts in my robot designs. I started off making the parts with a Prusa i3 FDM printer. Lately, to get more precision in my parts, I've been experimenting with SLA resin printing. I got an inexpensive Anycubic Photon SLA printer to play with. Right away, I was super impressed with the accuracy of objects made with an SLA printer. I found I could make parts with a precision that I could never touch with an FDM printer. But I wondered about the strength of these materials. And I've developed a pretty good sense of the relative strength of various FDM printer filaments and how they are actualized in real parts. But I could not find a good guide anywhere to compare alternative resin materials or to compare resin prints with FDM prints. As an engineer, I like to see numbers. And the two masters of measuring FDM print materials are Thomas Sandlanderer and Stefan Herman from CNC Kitchen. Both have done a great job of testing FDM materials. However, each one uses a slightly different way of testing and one's results are not directly comparable to the other. I thought it'd be great to test some resin prints using similar methodologies so I could better choose the right materials for SLA prints. Stefan does many different tests, but I mostly pay attention to two key tests to compare materials. First, he has a hook that he uses to show overall strength. It really combines both compression and tensile strength. You hang it on a hook and pull down with a force and measure where it breaks. Secondly, he measures the impact strength of a sample, a standard sample like this, using a calibrated hammer blow. I could get from Stefan's site the exact models he uses and the printing parameters he uses to make his test samples. So I set out to replicate Stefan's setup, at least for these two simple tests, not his elaborate tensile testing. My plan was to first test some standard FDM filaments with my setup. Then I would test some SLA objects printed with different resins. I found for my projects, once something survives the initial use, that an impact is usually the reason it eventually breaks. And so impact testing is super important for me. And from my initial experimenting with, with SLA materials, it seemed to have less impact strength than similar FDM materials. Now there are several different standard ways to test uh, impact strength. Stefan uses an ISO standard, and I thought it was best to use that also. So I constructed a falling hammer tester that I could use different weight hammers with and be able to test a range of materials. Now here I want to comment on Stefan's hook. He prints out this hook with a 30% infill, which is very common for an FDM print. And so it's very understandable why you'd want to use a, uh, a specific infill like 30% so you could get a better sense of how it would act in a typical FDM application. But here's the thing. SLA prints, resin prints, are typically printed out solid, 100% fill. So it wasn't clear to me how this hook would act when printed out with 100% fill. And secondly, I wasn't quite clear how to compare the results ultimately with a hook that had 30% fill, an FDM hook. But nevertheless, I really wanted to get started just to get an understanding, at least at a high level, of how I could compare resin and FDM prints. Finally, I want to comment and say that I am not at all an expert on resin printing at this point in time. And in fact, I wanted to use the results of these tests to start experimenting with different print parameters. But for now, I just try to use fairly standard parameters for making these resin prints and see where the results came out and then potentially, based on these early results, go in and fine tune the printing parameters. So this is really about how do you set up and do testing, not about how do you make the best print. So with that, I set out to make prints, test them, and see what the results are. And I have some friends here to help me with the testing. Hi, I'm Bjorn. Hi, I'm Theo. Hi, I'm Nico. Hi, I'm Ivy. Okay, guys, let's do some testing. For filaments, we're testing PLA from Hatchbox, PETG from Atomic, polycarbonate, which is PC Max, the SLA resins, Anycubic Clear, Soraya Blue, and Sparkmaker LCD Tough. In order to prove
print with this Soraya blue resin, they recommend a build chamber of about 30 degrees Celsius because the material is fairly viscous and won't flow properly in exposure if the viscosity is not reduced somewhat by heating it. Unfortunately, my lab environment is about 20 degrees Celsius, which is 10 degrees too cold to really use this resin. So I'm going to solve this problem by using this build chamber that I built for my Prusa I3. This allows me to print polycarbonate at a higher build environment temperature than would be if the Prusa was sitting just out on the, on the bench. The way it warms up in the chamber is both by combining heat from the printer itself with heat from a hair dryer that I pump into the side of the chamber through a hose. So I'm going to be pulling the Prusa out of this chamber and moving the photon into that chamber and we'll see how well it works with this blue resin. Okay, Theo, now the goal of this test is to pull down on this lever and it will pull force up on our hook here. And when it breaks, this scale will register how much force is pulling on it when it breaks. So you're going to start pulling down on this lever until it breaks. Are you ready to try? Yes. Okay. Let's, okay. How many hands can I use? You can use both hands and all your weight. Okay. okay so yeah, but you may want to stand up to get all your weight on it. Okay. Press Harder, 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 harder. Put your goggles on. Safety first. Theo's gonna pull down. All your force. Pull, pull, pull. Push, 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 push. Hard, 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 hard. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Oh man. Come on, come on. Oh, he still didn't break it. Oh. Okay, so we're back again to do pool strength testing. We've upgraded our scale to one that can do 300 kilograms, so uh, we should be good this time to test these hooks. Uh, also, for safety's sake, I think what I'm going to do is put a cable tie between uh, the different elements so that when it snaps, things can't fly that far. So we're going to put this little cable tie here. That's only purpose will be to, uh, when, it, when the hook fails, then it will keep this hook from flying too far. And because the weights are higher, uh, we're going to not have any kids do it. My friends will just have to watch while we uh, do the test. So we've been trying to do some tests with uh, Stefan's hook using polycarbonate and FDM. And so far we found that for the resin printed material, it's really strong. And it's starting to make applying enough forces difficult. Uh, so we're going to uh, switch gears here and go to test one of the polycarbonate samples, the PC Max polycarbonate. And Bjorn here had an idea to make it easier to apply the forces. And what's your idea, Bjorn? Having a breaker bar. Oh, uh, good idea. What are we going to do with the breaker bar? Put it on here. And then what? And then it'll. And then we'll apply more force. Then we'll apply more force. Good. All right. So let's try that. Let's try and see how much okay. force it takes to okay. test this uh, polycarbonate with the breaker bar. You want to step back? Okay, this is the blue resin. Hundred and thirty nine kilograms.
Hank! Whoa! Is that the strong go hammer? That is crazy Bob strong. Bob. Yeah, so the uh, polycarbonate didn't break at all. No, and uh, we can either try to raise it up higher or we could switch to a stronger hammer. Let's switch. Okay, let go. Whoa, it still didn't break. Can you believe it? That is so strong. It is it crazy was, strong. It was lower than it broke. Yeah, it is so strong. It's crazy. Well, we're all done testing, and I think we've had some really interesting results. First, we have the FDM prints. Um, and uh, as to remind you, we did PLA, PETG, and polycarbonate. Um, I have two columns here of results. The first is the, t the pool test where we had the hook and we pulled on it, and that's measured in kilograms. Secondly, we have the impact test where we hit the sample with the hammer, and this result is measured in joules per meter squared of the cross-section area that gets broken. So when we look at the FDM results, we see results that I think when I compare them to the results Stefan got on his side are roughly in range, not exactly the same. Uh, PLA, 82 kilograms to break the hook, uh, nine joules to break it in an impact test. With PETG, it actually was a little weaker in the pool test, 58 kilograms, but was much stronger in impact strength, 16. Polycarbonate, 62 in terms of pool strength, somewhat between the two, but as we saw in the video, was incredibly hard to break in an impact test, and I really should round this to 100 joules of uh, impact strength. Just really phenomenal results. Now let's get to the resin, um, which I think is super interesting. The Anycubic Clear um, came in with a pool strength of 120 kilograms. The uh, impact strength was not quite as good as the FDM materials. It had seven joules. The Spark Maker uh, material had a uh, pull strength of 101 kilograms, still much above the FDM materials with an impact strength of four joules. The blue material, the Soraya Blue, had a pull strength of 140 kilograms. That in the Imperial units is over 300 pounds. And its impact strength was the greatest of the group. Not as good as PETG and obviously not as good as polycarbonate, but better than PLA. So some really interesting results where this resin material is much stronger than I would have thought. The uh, impression I had coming in was it had less impact strength and I think these two materials do. The blue actually has, has, has reasonable impact strength. So I think it's really some interesting results. Now, I also wanna remind everyone that I spoke uh, earlier and said that we were printing out the FDM materials with 30% infill, which is the standard that Stefan uses. So in my mind, I thought, well, that's not a great comparison to the resin prints because that's at 100% infill. So I might, be, uh, I might be able to do better than these results if I printed it out at 100% infill. So I did that. And so I made a sample of the same hook with 100% infill and tested it out. And much to my surprise, the pool strength for the 100% infill material was 58 kilograms. Uh, and this is PLA. So this really equates to this one right here, which says when we went from 30% infill here to 100% infill, the pool strength went down. And the more I thought about it, I think I know what's happening. And again, Stefan has some data that's similar to this in his results where he shows that stiffness in many cases goes the other way with strength. And I think what happens when you have partially filled material is when you apply a force to it, this side is in tension, that side is in compression. And if it's 100% filled, there's nowhere for anything to go. So when the material on the inside eventually exceeds its tensile strength, it just breaks and then the whole thing shatters. Whereas in the one that has 30% infill, the material in the middle can collapse under force, the compressive force in the back, and that actually allows it to bend a little bit before the material on the inside reaches its tensile breaking point. So the long and the short of it is 30% infill is stronger than 100% infill. So 
And in fact, that's the way most of this material is used. So I think in the end, continuing to use 30% uh, infill as the standard for these hooks uh, when you put them with FDM makes sense when comparing it to 100% infill for the resin material. One last thing I will say is this 140 kilograms is a very large number. And you can see in these tests, it's a lot of force to break these hooks. That's, as I said, about 300 pounds in Imperial. So that's kind of dangerous, as you could see. Materials went flying everywhere, and it's difficult to generate those forces in a, in, in easily. So I think the community should have a standard way that we measure pull strength. And I like the idea of a hook. I just think we need a hook that breaks at a lower force, particularly as we, I believe, will improve these numbers for resin and they'll probably go even higher. So one option is to use the same design that Stefan has, but to, just to shrink it down in some way where it will break easier. And you could maybe do a Stefan hook 0.5 and make that smaller. The only problem with that is, is that the size of some of these hooks will get smaller then and it may be difficult to grab them. But I think that's something to be looked at, uh, making a version of this that breaks with a lower force. But again, I think the results are super interesting. I'm very excited about uh, the strength of these resin prints. It's much more functional than I ever would have guessed. And I'm happy to get input from others and participate in this uh, as a community. Thanks, everybody, very much.